In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate the derivatives of inverse functions. So let's review some of the properties of one-to-one -one functions and their inverses. So remember that the uh, function and its inverse exchange the roles of the inputs and the outputs. In other words, the inputs, the original function, become the outputs of its inverse and vice versa. The outputs of the original function become the inputs. So in other words, the domain of the function is the range of the inverse. The range of the original function is the domain of its inverse. If we're looking at the graph, if I have a point b comma a on the graph of the original function, then a comma b is a point on the graph of the inverse. Remember that inverses are the inverse of the inverse is the original function. And so if you take an input x, you apply the inverse, and then you apply the original function, then you're undoing the inverse, so you just get x back again. Or if you do it in the opposite order, if you take an input x, you apply f to it, and then you undo f, you just get x back again. So from these properties, we can say that if the original function is continuous when x equals b, so when you have the input b, and at that input, the output is a, then the inverse function is continuous at x equals a. Remember the connection between the graph of a function and its inverse is that they are mirror images of each other with the mirror line being the diagonal line y equals x. So let's see if we can take this notion a little bit further to develop an understanding of the connection between the derivative of a function and the derivative of the inverse, at least at a given point. So if we're looking at the point b comma a on the original function, we'd like to know, well, what would be the slope of the tangent line at the corresponding point with coordinates a comma b on the graph of the inverse function. So if we say that at uh, b comma a, the slope of the function is dy dx, if we reverse the roles of x and y, then it makes sense that on the graph of the inverse function, at the corresponding point a comma b, the graph is going to be dx over dy. And since dx over dy is the reciprocal of dy over dx, then, excuse me, we can say that the derivative of the inverse function at x equals a is the reciprocal of the derivative of the original function when x equals b. So in other words, these two points are the corresponding points. The slope of the original tangent line is the reciprocal of the slope of the tangent line at the uh, inverse function and vice versa. Now we could derive this in a different way. Uh, if we already know that the inverse function is differentiable, then we could actually apply the chain rule to this relationship. We know that if you start with x, you apply f, and then undo it, you get x back again. So here I have a composition of functions equaling x, and I can take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. Now on the left-hand side, I'll have to use the chain rule, take the derivative of the outside, multiply it times the derivative of the inside. And so I'll have derivative of the outside is the derivative of f inverse 
evaluated at f of x times the derivative of the inside, which would be f prime of x, and that's going to equal the derivative of x, which is just 1. So if I divide both sides by f prime of x, assuming f prime of x is not 0, then I'll say that, oh, the derivative of f inverse evaluated at f of x is the reciprocal of the derivative of f evaluated at x, which is, if I go back to our original notation, if I say a is f of b, so b is the input to f, a is the output, then I get the same relationship that the inverse, sorry, the derivative of f inverse at x equals a is the reciprocal of the derivative of f when x equals b. So let's formally write this down in a theorem. It says that if we have a one-to-one -one function f, which is differentiable, and f prime of b is not equal to zero, where f of b equals a, then f inverse is differentiable at x equals a, and the value of the derivative of f inverse is going to be the reciprocal of the value of the derivative of the original function. Let's look at some examples. So we're given this function, it looks pretty complicated, x cubed plus 3 times sine x plus 2 cosine x. I'd like to find the inverse of, uh, sorry, the derivative of the inverse at when x equals 2. All right, when the input to the inverse is equal to 2. So what's important to note is with these types of questions is we are not going to try to calculate the formula for the inverse. In fact, I don't think it would be very po even possible. Now, it might be if we're extremely clever, uh, but I don't think that there is even an explicit formula for the inverse of f. This is definitely a one-to-one -one function, uh, but we can't find a formula. But the good thing is, is we don't need to, and we don't want to. We don't want to avoid that. We're just asked to find the value of the derivative at a single point. We don't need the formula for that because we have this formula that says that the uh, derivative of f inverse when the input is a, is the reciprocal of the derivative of f when the input is b. And remember that in this case, uh, f of b equals a. So what would I need? I need to find this value b. If I can find the number b, which gives me the output of 2. Remember, 2, which is an input to the inverse function, must be an output from the original function. So I'm looking for a number b where f of b equals 2, and then I can use my formula. We calculate f prime at b, and as long as that's not equal to 0, we would get that the uh, derivative of f inverse of 2 is going to be 1 over f prime of b. So I need to think, look at this function, and I'm not going to try to formally solve an equation with it. I'm just going to try to use, well, basically, uh, you know, some of my mathematical knowledge to say, oh, what will give me an input of 2? There's only one x value because it's a one-to-one -one function. And so I see this 2 on the cosine of x. And so I would say, well, the cosine of 0 is 1. And the sine of 0 is 0 and 0 cubed is 0. So if x equals 0, then uh, f of 0 is going to be 2. All right, so my b value would be 0. All right, well, let's calculate f prime of 0. Let's start with calculating f prime of x. So use the power rule and the derivative of sine and cosine, respectively. Now let's evaluate that when 
uh, have x equal to 0. So I'll get 0 plus 3 times 1 minus 2 times 0. So that's just going to be 3. So then from my formula, the derivative of f inverse at 2 is going to be 1 over 3. Now there's another way we can approach this uh, question that might actually be more useful. And depending upon how well you remember implicit differentiation might make more sense to you. So still don't need to calculate a formula for the inverse function. So what we're going to do is just use this simple relationship between the function and the inverse. If y equals f of x, then x equals f inverse of y. And dx dy, remember now we're treating x as a function of y. So then dx dy would be f, the derivative of f inverse evaluated at y. So if I take my original equation, differentiate implicitly with respect to y. In other words, we treat x as a function of y. y is the independent variable. And we'll found an, find an expression for dx dy. And then we'll evaluate that when y equals 2. All right, so start with our original function. Take the derivative of both sides with respect to y. So dy by dy is just 1. For the rest of these, remember x now is an implicit function of y. So whenever I have a term that has x in it, I'm going to have to apply the chain rule. So I'll have 3x squared dx dy plus 3 cosine of x dx dy minus 2 sine of x dx dy. So I'll factor out the dx dy and solve for dx dy, and that gives me dx dy is 1 over that expression, 3x squared plus 3 cosine of x minus 2 sine of x. Now I still have to find out what x equals when y equals 2. We did that before, and we found out that when y equals 2, x equals 0. So when I evaluate that for x equals to 0, I get 1 third. So the answer to my question here is what is the uh, derivative of f inverse uh, when the input is 2? It's 1 third. Same answer as we got before using the other technique. All right, let's look at another example. I've got the sine function and I'd like to find the derivative of its inverse when the input is equal to one half. So we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here. This is kind of a preview of something that's coming up later in the chapter. But let's go ahead and, and we have all the tools to answer this question. So let's go ahead and do it. So just remember that for inverse sine, the domain is going to be uh, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Am I saying that correctly? I think I might have a, a mistake here. Because the inverse input to, to inverse sine uh, is going to be negative uh, 1 to 1. So what I meant to say here, and I'm going to make this correction live, is I meant to say that the range Well, in order to get a one-to-one -one function, we have to restrict the domain of sine of x to being negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So this highlighted portion, the whole function sine of x is definitely not a one-to-one -one function. But if I restrict the domain to be from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, that portion of the sine function represents a one-to-one -one function. So that's important to be able to answer this question because what I'm looking for is a number b where 
the sine of b equals one half, and b has to be between negative pi over two and pi over two. Let me make my range here, range. All right. Make my correction, change domain to range. All right, so uh, sine of what value is going to give me one half? Uh, sine of what angle gives me one half? If that angle has to be between negative pi over two and pi over two, that's going to be uh, sine of pi over six. So I'm going to use b equals pi over six. And what do I remember? That the derivative of sine is cosine. And what do I know about cosine of pi over six? Cosine of pi over six is root three over two. So uh, the derivative of inverse sine when the input is one half is going to be the reciprocal of the derivative of the original function at pi over six. And Go ahead and calculate that reciprocal. That would be two over radical three. And we'll simplify that, uh, rationalize the diam uh, denominator to get two radical three over three. So again, this is a kind of a preview you know, from the same type of analysis, or maybe even the analysis from the previous example where we use implicit differentiation, we can actually come up with a formula for the derivative of inverse sine. Like I said, we'll leave that for later in the chapter.